Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, welcome to Theater Advice. Um, David Hughes, as always, <laughs> that part doesn't change. I want to apologize. Uh, I've been kind of like on a 60 day hiatus. Um, had to get very, very uh, back involved with the company more. Uh, couldn't do any filming. Um, we've had some personnel changes and stuff like that. And I had to do a lot of sales and a lot of, a lot of showroom, uh, a lot of showroom activity. So, uh, this is one of the things that I had to dive into as well. It was a project that, um, uh, ended up needing my involvement a little more than normal. And, uh, kind of want to talk about that too, but, um, the house, as you see, as we kind of like walk through, you'll see some of the stuff, um, you know, really, really interesting artwork <clears throat> that I was actually just talking to the client about stuff like that. But, you know, uh, when you have a house, you know, this beautiful with this many design cues, it's got a lot of, a lot of colors, a lot of textures, even the floor in the courtyard is something that you don't typically see outside. Um, you know, we've got, you know, as we kind of pan here in the, uh, kitchen living room area, there's just a ton of really neat artwork. Um, some art displayed obviously in books, artwork by famous, um, artists on the walls. Uh, furniture, everything really just plays into and kind of matches the uh, the client's aesthetic, their style choice. And you know, to be quite frank, when you have a house with that many design cues in it and is that cool, how can the theater be any different? As you can see, the entire house is awesome. Uh, now let's get to, get to this. This is what I've kind of promised uh, the viewers for a little while. Um, this room is very, very cool because obviously you can see that it's cool, but there's so many hidden things in this room that make it, um, it was a, a labor of love. <laughs> it's the risotto of theaters. So what I love about this room is the client had this idea. First, we were just gonna do um, embedded LEDs in the sheetrock, so we are gonna come core out an inch of the sheetrock, put LEDs in there, do the flush mounted with the, with the uh, lenses on the front. And she all of a sudden brings me this wood, um, wood paneling and they were just samples. And I had the lighting already chosen for the walls. And what ended up happening is the panels have these, um, they're one centimeter wide. I mean, literally my finger can't go in them, right? So, uh, light strips are wider than that. And so the crazy thing is <clears throat> I kind of had to go back to the drawing board and figure out what light strips would fit in these crevices. And in doing that, you know, you get all these samples. I finally got the sample in of this. It's a bendy, um, thicker kind of, uh, like a rubberized light almost. And, uh, we use American lighting, uh, for our, for our led lighting strips. So I get this in and it does fit in there um with a metal channel but it doesn't fit in there so snug that it just won't fall out and so the crazy thing is what you don't see in this room and this is where the design cue really comes in this is why i say we are one of the most custom theater companies in the country is that the end of each one of these strips so every one of these strips is an individual believe it or not they go up and they end so every single one of these is an individual light strip and so um, they have a, a knob on them that is like almost an inch wide uh, piece of plastic. And so, you know, I, I used to install, so I'm thinking I got to hide this somehow, right? You can't hide it at the end because you'll see it. It doesn't fit in the crack, so you can't even put it in there and spray paint it. They all have to be in the, in the end point up, up in the attic. So how do you hide that and make it not to where the hole was so big or, you know, whatever. So, I mean, I literally thought to myself probably, I probably put 10 hours of thought into this, playing around with the wood, trying to figure out what to do. I finally figured out that as long as we hung them first, we could put the panels up um, and then 
just have them kind of just going through the holes. And it seems very simple, but to get this look, it wasn't. This was uh, three full days of labor just to do the paneling. Part of that was <laughs> when we bought the panels. Um, his wife's a designer, as you could tell from the house. But when we bought the panels, one of the crazier things that happened was we bought them together. You know, we were looking at them online and they said that they were four by eight. So you purchase them in four by eight. But what they meant really was that they per they come in pieces and that add up to four by eight. So there is 28 single panels in here. I don't know uh, if you guys understand, but when you have to line up 28 wood panels with all of the all of that wood on walls and ceilings that are never flat, straight, um, and not bumpy and things like that, you end up with a scenario. Um, <laughs> where it's very, very difficult to get it to look this seamless. I mean, it was literally days of labor and there's only one seam in the center that you can see and you have to look for it. Um, so it's a really, really seamless look, uh, really, really cool. And then, you know, we, we got down to, you know, how we were gonna design it. We drew it on paper, you know, where the light was gonna come down, where it was gonna pour from the ceiling, where it was gonna shoot out, what design we were going for, you know, kind of randomized it, um, that sort of thing. So. You know, some of the challenges on a job like this, one of the light strips already went bad. It just had a fault in it. It had a one inch section that was bad. And I've already had my guys, um, you know, pull up a pull string and kind of pull it back down and replace it. Cause you can't pull these panels down. They're so aligned and so perfect. It's very, very difficult. Um, but one of the coolest aspects of the room doesn't even involve me, which is, which is really, really neat actually. His wife is such a cool designer that sometimes I've had it to where I've done theaters before and the client's very proud of it, but quite frankly, it's just an okay theater to me. And so it never makes it on my website, never make a video of it and stuff like that. And I can see that they get uh, sometimes hurt by it, but it's just, you know, I'll, I'll walk in and there'll be purple chairs in a red room, you know, or like something that I'm like, I can't put that on my website because people are gonna think I chose that or people are gonna think I designed it. And so, um, you know, when I walked in here, we did all this stuff and the room was, you know, not done yet. They hadn't had their furniture and stuff like that. I walk in and there's these light up trees and um, all this stuff that people would not think to put in a theater, but I'm telling you, it just goes in here. It goes with the vibe of the house, it goes with the vibe of the client and her love for passion and beautiful things. Um, it just really kind of pulled into the, pulled some stuff into the space that I think is really, really special. And you tie that, all these kind of warm gray, you know, warm grays and tones and, and lighting in with this crazy um, wall that we did in here. Uh, it's just a it's just a really special space. So now I'll talk about you know some of the equipment design cues because that's obviously the nerdy part of our channel that people follow the most. Um, one of the first things we did was he wanted a 150. That we did not have the depth to do a 150 in here. So I walked around the corner, and it's his son's bathroom. And I'm not going to show you that because it's in his son's room. But um, what we did was we built a projector box into his son's bathroom, which I actually showed in a separate short that I did. So if you want to go back to that, but. Um, we just built cabinets across the front to, to hide it with doors, but that projector is actually into someone's bathroom and we just hit it on the back end. Um, but that gave us the depth to give them their big 150. Now they're sitting 15 feet away from a 150, great distance from a screen that's this big and this, um, this grandiose. Um, but also when we started putting the wood around there, um, and when I say we, I mean me, <laughs> I don't do stuff like this. So I bought a saw for the first time in my life on this job. Cause I came out here, my woodworker was busy. I didn't think I could have him sit around till we could figure out how to get these lights in there. So I just told my guys, I'm like, dude, let's just go get a saw and let's do this. And I have pictures of me outside cutting these panels. They all had to be cut. Um, so we cut these panels and everything. I even made all those cuts around the, uh, around the projector. He can get as close as he wants to. It looks super, super sexy. <laughs> so, um, you know, I even made those little cuts on the top. They look like teeth for crying out loud. And, uh, you know, it, it, I had my woodworker put them out, uh, build the projector box out of the, out into the room, the exact depth of the wood already. So when I built it around there, I was like, man, I didn't need my woodworker today, which was really cool. But so I literally came for two, two full days of the three and installed all these wood, all these ceiling panels with my guys and stuff like that. It was actually kind of fun to dive back into the fields because that's kind of where my, my background was too. So, but the projector's in the wall. Now you came and see it. I mean, it's so design cued. The projector in that dark wood wall is, almost non-existent, um, you know, especially when the lights are off. So it's a really cool feature to have the projector built into that, built into the wall feature. I really like that. So that was one design, uh, you know, flaw or design, or design challenge, it wasn't a flaw. 
Um, it was a design challenge that we had to get over is giving him his screen size he wanted. Um, he already had the ceilings in the rears. Um, and a lot of people don't know this, but Triad makes uh, custom grill colors and they're just magnets. So as long as the uh, speaker is not an inset type speaker, it is a you know magnetic, it'll take a magnetic grill. We ordered um, color match grills for the walls and the ceiling. And then the front of the room got actually kind of tricky because we wanted to center this wood and this screen on that wall. But there's that door there and um, obviously a speaker behind it. They, they literally said they don't want to shut the door all the time. And so, um, which is perfectly fine. I mean, I don't shut the door in my own theater either. Um, but because of that, the speakers were wired originally to the left and right of the screen, of course. And so, um, you know, we kind of, I kind of did this thing where I designed these uh, triad speakers. So those are the bronze angled L uh, ceiling um, LCRs. So they, they're actually angled on a 45 and they sound great. I mean, they, they're now up out of the way, um, angled at the seating. Um, you know, they sound like front speakers being up there, they're back box, they're, they're powerful. And because, because it's triad, I did the front three, I did the rears. This is actually even color matched. So this is their, uh, their silver on wall LCR. I love triad for stuff like that. I mean, that is, they'll paint the entire chassis, not just the grill. That is an entire on wall speaker, fully customized to just this room in this space. Um, it doesn't take anything away from, you know, from the look of the room. Um, they didn't want to do the the center channel in a in the cabinet they liked this clean look of the of the four doors across the front um so we've got uh in here triad we got svs sb uh, uh sb 3000s 13 and a half inch drivers dual um we've got that is the salamander uh denver i believe cabinet i mean it's a super super sexy cabinet it goes crazy good in here with the with kind of the warm tones and, and things like that of the of the paint scheme and the floor. Um, Epson LS12000, which is pretty much a, a mainstay in most of my designs. Uh, of course, Screen Innovations Slate 120 inch SL12. So that's their 1.2 gain slate screen. And um, I mean, the room came out just spectacular. It sounds great, it looks great. They can leave the door open. Every concern they had, we, you know, we kind of had an answer for it. Um, you know, all in all, it's probably about a $40,000 room. Um, not including furniture, which is probably a little more expensive, but just just what we did. Um, it's about a it's about a forty thousand dollar room with the with the ceiling, the cabinet, all that stuff. Um, God knows how much that furniture costs because it's really really awesome. So hope it was expensive. Looks like it, and uh, that's that kind of furniture too that uh, doesn't really mess with your ear as you sit. Um, it's got the flip up the flip up backs there that turn them into recliners and things of that nature. So. Um, but this is one of our favorite projects I've ever done. I will probably put it up for an award uh, this year and it will probably win because why would it not? And uh, we'll probably switch to a little B-roll and some, you know, music or whatever. I appreciate you guys watching and I uh, got a couple more videos for you coming soon too. Thanks.